Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com, and this is week 30 of the raw file edit for you guys submitting. And what's interesting is I didn't even see this photo in the raw folder that I use uh, to keep all of the raw images that people send in, and I thought it would be interesting. It's really cool. I mean, it's from Cu Cuba? Cuba? Not Cuba Gooding Jr., but just Cuba, as we call it here. Um, so... We know they have these old cars there, and they keep fixing them up, souping them up, keeping them going, and it's really, really awesome looking. Um, it gives you that old world feel in sort of the new world, obviously with like rims and stuff like this. It's just, does it say US on there? That's pretty interesting. It's just a really cool looking car, and it's going to be some interesting edits that we're going to get from all of you guys because, you know, black and white, uh, old world look. New world look, add grain, take grain out, do this, do that. This is a file, again, that is highly editable for most, not edible for eating, but editable for editing, but I think we're going to see some interesting ones this week, and I, I've been toying around with the tone curves here to see if there's a difference between the tone curves and editing using just my exposures, recovery, fill light, and blacks, and so far... You know, because I haven't ventured into the tone curves very often, to be honest. Um, but just doing some more research into it and playing with them a little more, it's kind of I'm kind of stuck in between. I kind of think that there's some things you can do in there that you may not be able to do fully with the regular edits. But then I think that you may be able to get pretty much the same edits through both. But that's just my feelings as of right now. But it is interesting to see that, you know, you can bump your shadows, you know, this is just going to control your shadow areas, but that's kind of like moving your black levels or contrast slightly. But I'm just going to toy around with this today because what the raw file edit is still all about is learning the functions that are in Lightroom and starting to e experiment and understand what is going on here so that you can implement it in your photos that you edit. So we got the darks. That's interesting. You got the shadows. You got the darks. See where we're going to take this. I do have a plan for where I want to go with this this week. Highlights. Highlights are interesting. It's like using your recovery slider. It's kind of the same. I don't like how it grays out there. But I'm going to I'm just going to go here for the time being. I liked it when it got uber duber warm because the the feel that I get for this is I want to go old world um just old world feel and you know, it's going to be extreme but what you know that's the, the the point of this is to go kind of extreme you know i want to give it that you know old film look that has been beat up that has been sitting in the garage or in the sun and being overbaked and give it that little bit of old world feel you know what i didn't even look at the settings that it was shot at um it was shot with the canon eos 500d 1 12 50th of a second f 2.8 iso 100 with a 24 to 70 2.8 USM L lens. Uh, it, it's really interesting. What I liked here is you can see the um, Ferrari logo right here. I thought that was funny. Um, I love the Ram bar. That's pretty cool. Is there a point of focus in here that I see? Is it? I think it's right on the taxi sign. There's two taxis here. Actually, there's one taxi. I don't know if this is a taxi back here. But I loved love how these cars look so souped up. It's pretty cool. Wow, that's interesting how, like, all of, by messing with this vibrance, it's kind of taking out all of the weird edits I did up here with the temperature and the tint. And we know that saturation is just going to throw it way over the top. And I don't want to go black and white. I want to stick with this old world feel. And see what I come up with. Because now, you know, I, I've moved past what I wanted to do with it. I don't want to go too much with the, the fill light. No. No, I'm going to take that back. I'm going to go with the blacks back again. Let's see if we put some... I kind of like this feel of it more than I like the green feel. I mean, the green feel is interesting, but why don't I go with this more reddish, burnt color... <laughs> I'll call it burnt sienna as uh, Bob Ross used to call it. Now let's add some burnt sienna to this wonderful happy car. And let's put some happy trees in here. Wee happy trees. I love Bob Ross. All right, I'm bringing it back. I'm going back. I'm going back to the green. 
and this is just interesting. This is just one of those interesting edits, and I can't wait to see what you guys do to it because there's so many, so many different ways we could take this. Um, that's where it started out, and this is where I'm at right now. Just really tweaking. I, you know, I love this. I want to, I want to stay with this burnt look. I'm just gonna go with the burnt look. See if I pull back on the yellow, it's like it almost gets back to the original. But I want to, I want to, I want to dirty it up. 1960s style, 1950s style, dirty it up. And do I want to come down here and play with the grain? If I even know where the grain is, because there it is. Because I rarely ever come down to this. And I'm going to dirty it up. Why not? Why not take a chance and just dirty it up? Add some of that grain in there because I was going for that old film, filmier look. You know, like from the slides, it started to... Well, slides didn't really change too many colors because they, they were... Especially Kodachromes were amazing. But, let's see... I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play with it. I mean that's that's again the point of these raw file edits is to have fun and experiment in here. And sure, this may not be how I would edit it if it was my file, but I'm learning how these sliders are working. I'm learning the cause by doing, you know, cause and effect. By moving this, this happens. By moving this, that happens. You know, so that you can turn it around and and have it translate into your everyday work. So. I'm still not, I'm not loving this grain. I'm really not loving the grain. So I'm going to go the other way. I'll just smooth it the other way. I don't even know, does that do stuff? Let's see. Yeah, screw it. Let's go the other way. Grain, all the way gone. Bye-bye grain, gave it a smoother look. And clarity? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Just going to stay plus there a little bit and that's what i'm gonna go with it's ugly it's dirty it's weird some people may like it some people may hate it i don't particularly really really love it but but i had fun doing it and that's what it's about i got a nice happy little edit and that's what i'm gonna leave it with now let's see what adam had to do with his and then we'll be back to put them side by side and then open it up to you guys adam you are up all right, we got some really cool vintage cars here. Uh, this uh, first car here is to be appears to be a Chevy Bel Air. Um, I'm not a vintage car expert, but um, from looking at this, uh, I'm guessing it's probably a mid 50s, maybe late 50s. Um, you know, it's seen some wear and tear, but uh, still looking good for its age. Uh, the chrome rims definitely add some bling to the. Uh, already chromed out bumpers and body trim and stuff like that you know cars like this they make beautiful subjects for photography you know they're really bulbous um, they have tremendous character I mean you know the front end almost looks like a face with a mouth and teeth and and the headlights are like eyes and this big hood is like a you know big nose with a giant forehead over here I mean you could really kind of get carried away with it but you know this car has a lot of character and uh, the photographer did a terrific job of um, you know getting a low angle to really kind of exemplify the stance that this car has and that's a really interesting thing to think about when you're photographing something inanimate like a, like an automobile like a car is that trying to, to derive some kind of an emotional response from that car just beside the you know the aesthetic of the car um, it's nice how there's another car you know in companion uh, to it in the background as well um, and interestingly this was shot in Cuba now I'm not a historian but you know I do know that there's quite a few uh, vintage cars in Cuba that you know these cars were you know imported up until a certain point until there was a trade embargo so you still have you know quite a bit of preservation of the old you know 50s um, American uh, cars and a lot of them are obviously still in use like this one as a taxi so great shot really like the way it was done and uh, let's see what we can do here to make it you know more interesting with an edit now again this is just my take it's a quick edit and if you want to uh, post something different please download the file and post your edits so here we go so I'm gonna leave the exposure as it is for now we've got some 
um, you know, uh, overexposed highlights in the hood here, but it doesn't, I don't mind that. You know, this is a metallic surface, it's painted, it, it's reflective, it's kind of a midday shot, so, so it's cool. Um, I'm going to add some blacks to it, and I'm just masking this just to, you know, see how much um, I'm underexposing. Um, I don't really mind underexposing the bottom of the cars or anything like that. The details inside the grill, not necessarily that important right now. I'm going to bump up some contrast. I really want to enhance the metallic feel of this and also bring out some of the texture in the, uh, the asphalt over here. I'm going to add some clarity and that's going to boost my midtones. And you can see if you really pump it up there, it's, it's, you know, you get like intense detail. I don't really need to do that so much, but I want to bring it up to a point where I do get some more of that detail. I'm going to pump up my highlights a little bit over here too as well, because that's just going to give it more of a sheen. Um, and you know, with something metallic, you know, the sheen is, is a cool thing. Um, the other thing I want to also do is I'm going to go to the white balance and I'm just going to bump up the color temperature a little bit. Um, you know, we've got f a fairly neutral white balance, which is fine, but to give it more of that sense of the time of day, I'm just going to just warm it up just a little bit over here. And I'm, you know, looking at the pavement over here and just to make sure that, you know, I don't want it to be orange. Um, even though that actually looks kind of cool if you're going for that kind of vibe. Um, I'm just going to back it off and just give it a little bit of, of a glow. You know, you can you know, see that there's the grass has a little bit of glow here. Um, one thing I'd like to do is I'd like to add some recovery. And uh, that's just going to uh, offset, um, you know, some of the, the, the overexposed. And when you do that, you can actually see some of the detail coming back to the sky into these clouds here. Um, I don't really want to do, you know, 100% detail because, I mean, 100% recovery because then you get kind of weird you know, stuff going on in here that looks a little artificial. So I'm going to just do it somewhere about in, in the middle, right about there like that. Um, one thing I also want to do is I want to do some sharpening. So I'll select what, you know, appears to be, you know, maybe a focal point here, this headlight, which looks, you know, fairly sharp. And I'll bring the amount up um, somewhere around there. I'm going to mask it off with the option key and just get my edge detail just like that okay so you know if we look at the before you know the shots terrific um, real nice real strong look at the after and to me it's got you know more of a more of a, a you know just more impactful now this shot also for me you know just screams out some vignetting I want to really you know bring the focus more into the center here um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take the the amount I'm gonna bring it down a bit and in this case, you know, it might be a little bit exaggerated. And interestingly, as soon as I do this, you can see the detail coming into the sky. You actually see clouds, you see some blue to the sky. So I'm, I'm actually really liking what that's doing here. I'm going to uh, just mess with the, um, the other bits here because even though that there's another car in this shot, that car is not the focal point. It just lends context. So I really want to keep the focal point of the first car here so if, if we do darken that that other car I'm not really upset about that um, so yeah so I'm just gonna mess with these sliders a little bit here and again I'm doing this really for taste you know this might not be everybody's taste I get that um, but again please if you have another idea for an edit download the file and show it to us alright so now what we've done um, you know I think this shot has a lot of impact right now um, in, in doing the vignetting, uh, we've lost a little bit of detail down here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pump up the brightness a bit. Uh, not, no, that's too much. And then what happens is I'm losing detail in the sky. So I'm going to bring the brightness back, but I'm going to add some fill light. And I'm going to bring it to somewhere, somewhere around there. And, you know, in keeping with this sky looking like it's got a little bit more detail to it, I'm going to grab the uh, the uh, burn tool here, and I'm just going to use kind of a wide stroke, and I'm just going to just you know sweep this over my sky here, and just see if I can get a little bit more detail, you know. And in doing so, we got some weird things going going on over here. So I'm going to just bring the exposure, you know, up to just a point. And we're just doing a very subtle thing here. Um, I'm going to just mess with the brightness, but yeah, you know what happens is that it just gets weird. So we're not going to even mess with that. You know, see if we just do a little bit, you know, even the contrast, you start to get these weird kind of, you know, um, aberrations that, that just are not, not very cool to look at. Maybe if we add some saturation, 
And this is, again, this is not, you know, arbitrary, like, hey, let's just do this, let's just do that. It's more about, you know, what can we do here to just get a little bit more out of what we have here. Um, you know what? I'm going to have the clarity. That looks kind of crazy. <laughs> um, okay, sharpness. You know, and, and, and don't be afraid to play with the sliders here. I mean, just because you, you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. But if you can do something that adds a little bit to your image, why not? Um, one thing I might do is just mess with the vibrance a little bit. Just pump that up, you know, and I'm, I'm keeping a close eye on it. Um, and I'm going to see if I can pump the saturation just a little bit. And again, you know, this is an inanimate object, and I'm just trying to give it a little bit more life, just make it a little bit more, you know, exciting, um, you know, see what we can do here. So let's see, see something like that. Okay, now that's a pretty exaggerated edit considering where we started. You know, we started here, really nice shot, and look where we're ending up. All right, so in looking at this, I feel the color is a bit exaggerated. Um, it's, you know, borderline cartoonish maybe. Um, well, whatever. I mean, it looks kind of cool. Before and after, you know, definitely is enhanced. So, you know what? I want to go black and white. Bam. I've been thinking about going black and white with this from the start. And, you know, to be honest, I think that this really, you know, exemplifies the impact of this the best. Um, in doing so, I want to pump up my contrast. Really, really, you know, give it a lot more impact right there. Just hit up a little bit more fill light just to balance it out. And that is my edit. Uh, looking forward to seeing what you guys put up this week on the forum. And uh, let's get back to you, Jared. And we are back. Adam, how are you doing this week? I'm doing well. How about you? Nice glasses, buddy. Uh, thanks, man. The Uber Duber chic glasses. That's exactly right. Well, you know, I'm nerding out these days, so but, what can I say? But they are working, and we do know that glasses do make a world of difference. Yes, they've improved my uh, short-range focus. <laughs> Good. So what, what I want to say is I do like your black and white edit. Thank you. Uh, it, uh, it stands out interestingly. Oh, um, you know, and, and I have to say I do like your color edit. Um, in fact, there's a point in the video where I did something somewhat similar. So, um, you know, I, I, I like what you did with that. I like where you went with it. Well, my, my fact, whole... Go well, ahead. I was going to say, your, yours kind of looks like... Um, like like an old Kodak film shot. And that is what I was going for. I talked about how I wanted to dirty it up and go for an older film look. I even threw grain in at the end, and then I'm like, I don't like what? it. I threw it in at the end, and then I took it fully out. And I was like, all right, I like it with this smoother looking without the grain, like Ektachrome or Kodachrome 25 or something. Mm -hmm. Um, you spoofed it up. Yeah, but my, my whole thing for doing it was to try to give it an older world feel, not go black and white, um, just because, I mean, I don't know, I just wanted to do something different, and I tried tone curves a little bit, and, you know, it's just, like I said to everybody, it's about learning and, and experimenting here, because yes. this is where you're going to find little things. Like, if you find one thing that you did by accident while playing around with the sliders that you can translate or take into the your editing of your yes. own files, then then this is this has worked. Because it's all about learning and getting better. There's still no right or wrong way to do it. And this is going to open up for a ton of possibilities for edits. You know? I lost you there for a minute, buddy. Oh, you lost me? Oh, well, I still have you. So... Well. Anyway, the one thing that I was going to note about your particular edit is that, you know, the reflections in the chrome that pick up the coloration of the asphalt look really super cool. I didn't even notice it. You know, the way that the, the, the blue of the car has kind of, you know, it actually changed the color of the car, I think, in a cool way. Um, so, so I'm liking what you did there. You know, I think it's strong, really strong. And I think like you, um, or I guess like me, we both really pumped up that contrast quite a bit. I think that I actually didn't touch the contrast oh of course i did i thought maybe i just did it all in the um in the in the tone when, curves but obviously when you can see you not touch the contrast i don't know i did 69 percent is what i got it to and you know what's funny looking at yours it kind of gives it that leave it to beaver look you know no no you don't get that <laughs> what, do you mean? what do you mean i don't know it has that night you know it just has that feel of uh like um the old shows that i used to watch on nickelodeon that were replays of uh, Dennis the Menace and the old car just sitting there and it's like right. okay hello dear what would you like for dinner tonight right it's like yeah, okay so you're saying it has that more vintage vibe uh, I guess just you know barring those kind of like blinged out 
chrome rims. Barring the blinged out chrome out rings, the rims, the Ferrari emblem on the side. I love that. And, and like stuff that. like that. Yeah, that, that is super cool. Yeah, I mean, there's not much we, we need to say here because this is that file that is going to be opened up to so many people to do so many different interesting things with. And, and I, can't, I can't wait to see what everybody does for the week 30 of this raw edit. Well, the only thing that, that you know, I wanted to just point out is one thing that I did mention in my video is that when you're photographing inanimate objects, particularly things like cars, I mean, pe cars have personalities. I mean, how many people do you know or have heard of that, like, have a name for their car? Yeah, you have, have to find it. Every so, so, you know, in keeping with that, just simply standing there and just clicking away at a car is one thing, but to actually try to, you know, position yourself like this photographer did to get the stance of the car, to give the car, to kind of exemplify that personality, I think is really cool. I think the photographer did a really cool job with it, and I think that's definitely something to keep in mind when you're photographing inanimate objects. Absolutely. It's all about the angles, especially with, like you just said, inanimate objects, because you have to give it life. You have to make it have a feel for it. And, and another angle that could have been done here is you come to the front of it and the two mm. headlights are like eyes and the grill is like a mouth and you can make it growl and look like it's something interesting. So there are different angles that you can take as a photographer, especially with inanimate objects. And this may be a, an assignment that I get to further down the road, but you know, definitely play around with just an object, even a square. Make it look interesting. You can do it. You can find the angles. It's all about seeing. You know, the technique will follow. Um, you'll be able to do whatever you need to do there, but just seeing the image and, and finding it, like Adam said, in the inanimate object is, you know, a big plus because it's going to help when you're shooting actual objects. And, you know, that's pretty much all I got. All right. All right, Adam. All right, Jared. Oh, I also want to say that there is no edit from the photographer because this is one of the earlier photos. Like I said in my video, this was hiding in my RAW folder. I didn't even remember downloading it. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing that somebody sent this in and it, and it got picked out. Absolutely. All keep right, sending Adam. Him. What was that? I said keep sending him. Yeah. So if you would like to send in your <clears throat> excuse me RAW files, send it to froknowsphoto at gmail.com. And uh, be sure to send in your JPEG final edit, full res, uh, along with your raw edit, and we will try to get to it and bring it to the world. Adam, thank you very much for taking part again. Thank you, Jared. It's a pleasure. All right, guys, so download that raw file. Get it up in the forum. Put it on the Facebook. Remember, if you're not signed up for the forum yet, go ahead and sign up. That's how you can access the 29 past raw files before this one and get to play with them, download them, and edit them. Jared Poland, fro knows photo.com. See ya.